Good afternoon. This is Tom Alexander. This Sunday, November 21st, it's about uh, 2.45 p.m. in the afternoon here in the U.S. in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. And I thought we'd uh, do our weekly review of the report and expound a little bit on the report and the information in there. This is going to be quite the interesting week. I will remind you in the U.S. it's uh, Thanksgiving. Volume will be tend to be thinner. Uh, that doesn't mean we won't have volatility. It doesn't mean we won't have significant moves, but it the, the lack of volume lends itself to the type of trade that you get with the lack of volume and you can get whipped all over the place in all time frames. Uh, and we may, you know, not not that the last week or so hasn't done done the exact same thing. You know, we have this incredible move that was continued on Friday. First of all, let me say this, just the, the bigger picture here where you have the S&P, the NDX, both traded to new all-time high ground last week uh, by a tick or so in the, in the uh, S&P, more so in the NDX. The NDX is in its obligatory manic ramp higher after a three-day crash. The rut is on its low, and at the moment, the bizarro price action has from the low in the NDX on the 10th, it's up into Friday's session high. And these are cash charts, about 5%, not quite. <clears throat> on the other hand, we have the Russell, Mr. Rutt, down almost the same, almost down 5%. Now, these things are, you know, there's, I, I, Trust me, I understand the difference between the Russell and the NDX, but also trust me, in strong bull trends, you don't have this, this type of divergence going on indefinitely. And in strong bull trends, uh, everything is generally moving in the same direction. Now, maybe option expiration had things to do with this, but, but all of the qualifiers aside, this is odd. And to me, it looks like a topping process, maybe on an intermediate term basis. And once again, that that's not, a, you know, I have to be careful what I say and what is heard. I'm not saying sell the farm and go short. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that this is caution for pressing the long side of this market. And I don't care what index you're choosing, whether it's the, the NDX, the, the Russell, the Dow, or, or the S&P. So, as we head into Globex tonight, it's a very, very mixed bag. Uh, you know, I gave levels. I'm not going to go through the levels uh, in this video. There's no point in taking the time to do that. But look, go to the profile charts that I put in the report. The levels are there. It's the same levels on these screens. The, sc the, the levels that I've been putting in the report to the downside over the last week or so are still relevant. Now, as far as what's above us, there is nothing above us in the S&P or the NDX, except for Friday's high. I don't play the magic number game. There's no trade above us. It's all time high ground where it stops to guess. Okay, let's do take a look. I, I do want to do a little bit deeper uh, dive into this. Now, <clears throat> this is price breadth. The caveat is always is that this tends to be somewhat of a blunt instrument. You can't rotate trade it. It is it requires interpretation, and that interpretation has to be put into the context of whether you are in a bull or bear trend because the price breadth relationship behaves differently. We're in a bull trend. Uh, what you see here, and I have collapsed the five day moving average of NYC advancing issues because it's not really what I want to highlight. I think the, the big in the bigger picture. I want to talk about the 10-day moving average of advancing issues. I don't want to talk about breadth. Now, as you probably know, uh, one thing that I lean on very heavily, and this, this is sort of universal and, and regardless of whether you're in a bull or bear trend, when breadth reaches negative 2,000, even in bear trends, you're usually time-wise near a short-term low. Now, price-wise, you can have significant further uh, capitulation. It's sort of, and this, that's, this is what this is. It's sort of a sign of sentiment signal of short-term capitulation. So, <clears throat> the, 
But, but what I want to emphasize is, is the relationship between the 10 day moving average price and then breadth, because I've gone back and this is just sort of back of the envelope eyeballing things. When breadth gets around this level here and it rolls over the way it's been rolling over in this last advance, it's a heads up and we are at that that heads up point in this price breadth work that suggests something has to give here pretty quickly. Now, typically, and I put this in report, my best guess is as we head into go backs that we're going to have some sort of short term washout. And I think that would that would be wonderful. I think it could set up a really nice year end rally. Now, what if we get that short term washout the, the signal for me is if breath closes below negative 2000 or greater, then I'm going to that what that will do it will also drag the 10 day moving average of breath even lower. And that could set up the next big buying opportunity. Who knows? Now, obviously, that again, that's not a rote signal. If we have negative two thousand breadth to go in and and you know leverage up and go long, it, it but it it will be a very specific market condition to monitor, perhaps for a good long trade opportunity, a swing trade type of situation uh, with the divergences, the disparate action among and between the indices the situation is partly cloudy but this if, if you didn't know what's going on in the other indices i would still say the same thing that this this particular market condition this relationship between the price level in the s p the 10-day moving average of nyse advancing issues and breadth which is nyse advancing mass declining issues is suggestive of something has to give on a sharp move now that could be up. Now I want to go back and show you the incidents that when we had <clears throat> breadth cross below about this level, about this 1450 level. And let's take a look at where price was and let's take a look at where breadth was. And so and, and you can see the timing of this is not always perfect. Sometimes like right here, you had the, and maybe I should have had this over one one day, but same difference, really. Uh, you know, it was a, a couple of days before you had the negative 2,000 breadth reading as this decline. Uh, likewise, here, your your breadth climax came, well, in this particular instance, came right at the, at the low extreme, but, but it came a day after this, the 10-day uh, moving average crossed that 1450 level. Here is one where this sort of stopped on a dime, but again, you see this negative 2000 breadth reading. And it, you know, we immediately bottom that was tested here, but it held uh, over here. Uh, you had breadth or 10 day moving average flirting with this issue with, with crossing this level. And it really almost immediately began to trade higher. And you didn't, you know, you had some negative intraday readings in here, but nothing, it did not reach negative 2000 on a closing basis. Okay, over here, the 10-day uh, moving average actually flirted with this negative 1400, uh, 1450, never really crossed it. And, but you did have the negative 2000 breadth reading right here, and you went marginally lower about four days later and, the, later and then bungee jumped higher. But again, this previous level held. You, you know, you can't just rotate trade this and you, you have to pay attention to your auction market levels. All of those, those caveats apply. All right, here's another instance when the 10 day moving average crossed 1450 and it coincided with a divergence in breadth. This is sort of the ideal trade setup that you don't always get. You had the momentum low here, went higher for one day, made a lower low and a higher low in breadth. And then you, you started ramping higher again. Similar situation over here, you had, uh, this is the level that crossed that 1450 area, then your breadth, your negative 2000 breadth reading occurred here and you bought them two days later. Um, let's see, where are we now? Okay, I wanted to get 
my perspective back there for a second. All right, here, this is an interesting one in my view because you crossed right here. And this, is, th this provides the big caveat. Okay, so you crossed here and it looked like, this is sort of similar to where we are now in the S&P. It looked like, okay, we're going to roll over here. Breath was, you know, rolling over, but it really hadn't reached that negative 2000. And, and the market went on this furious rally for, I don't know, almost two weeks, 10 trading days. And it was up almost 7% as Brett continued to be rather tepid. And then it did finally roll over, over, over here. But examples like this where it fails are very important because these signals will fail. There's no 100% signal in this stuff and it does require interpretation and it has to be validated and confirmed by price action. You don't just close your eyes and hope that it works out. You let price put you into the trade. There are different ways to do that. We talk about that in the live trade room in real time. Okay, here's another example where uh, the 10 day moving average crossed, but that was actually following a negative 2000 breadth reading here that put in a, a bottom that proved temporary. Then you had the 10 day moving average roll over and you, then you had these divergences in breadth. And this was a little bit different than, than the period we're in now, because this was still in that, that ramp phase off this extraordinarily, this historically compressed condition we reached here. So that brings me back to the present and the future. And the short of it is, pardon the pun, if we take out Thursday's low, I'm guessing that would be a good heads up, if not a, a sell signal. You want to be paying attention. Uh, I think if we're going to, if the signal is going to quote unquote fail here, or if the divergence is going to resolve in a bullish manner, you're going to see this market rally pretty quickly. Otherwise, I would be favoring short trades and I would be looking for this negative 2000 breath reading. If that occurs, I'll send something out. Uh, by the way, if you found value in this, please like it. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll talk to you next week.